I've bought probably eight or nine of these banker boxes worth of vintage science fiction and fantasy books from all over the place. They're falling everywhere. I'm going to show you what I set aside for myself out of this massive haul and then invite you to buy some of them in a fairly unique, fun new way. This Sunday at noon, Sunday the 3rd at 12 Pacific time, I'm going to be running a live auction on the majority of these books on Whatnot, which is an app slash site where you watch me live stream and bid on stuff during auctions that last from 20 to 30 seconds per item. And you'll be able to get a bunch of this stuff for cheap. If you're curious about that, there will be more details later in the video. First one for me, we're starting with Barrington J. Bailey, a guy that I've heard quite a bit about actually, often touted as one of the great forgotten genre writers of all time. The Zen Gun has a really great cover. Alan Dean Foster's novelization of Krull, a movie that I was not aware of. I know Conan, I know Call the Conqueror, but I didn't know that there was a Krull movie and I don't know anything about it. George R. R. Martin's Dying of the Light in the Timescape, Ballantine edition. Down Below Station by C.J. Cherry, a classic. I've never read Cherry. One of the reasons I would like for you to buy a few of these from me for cheap for you is that I'm saving up for a better camera because I want to drop kick this one into the street because of the autofocus issues. So I would like to bank up some money for a nicer vlogging camera for everybody's sake. Gather Darkness by Fritz Lieber. I think this is science fantasy. This is one of the ones I'm really excited about, Lioness by Jack Vance. This is high fantasy, and Jack Vance wrote the Dying Earth books, which are really the only fantasy books that I can point to as ones that I truly love without any provisos or conditions. Eyes of the Overworld is my favorite fantasy book that I've ever read. I haven't read that many of them, to be fair, but this is supposed to be really excellent. Them Bones. This is the same printing as the original Neuromancer paperback. Same kind of graphic. Howard Waldrop, someone I know nothing about, but it was a Nebula award-winning author. It, he was an, uh, a Nebula award-winning author. Mask Theory. I owned a copy of this before. It was not as cool as this, Jack Vance. I got rid of it before I really knew that I was a Jack Vance reader. A lot of these are probably first editions. I pulled these out of a single thrift store that I happened to stop at just on a whim, and they were running a half-off sale for the whole shop, and it was somebody's whole collection of science fiction, and I bought the majority of it, I would say 85-90% of it, for, I don't know, it was probably like 100 bucks or something. Star of the Unborn. This is the same artist, I think, or certainly the same sort of an aesthetic as the original Lord of the Rings paperbacks. Fra uh, Franz Werfel, or Verfel, I don't know how to pronounce it. One that I know nothing about. To Live Forever by Jack Vance. The Challenge of the Sea by Arthur C. Clarke, with the coelacanth on the cover. I got a ton of Arthur Clarks, and this is the one that I'm keeping. Well, two of them. Here's the other one. Finally found a copy of Rendezvous with Rama. I find the sequels constantly, but the original is pretty hard to come by, at least when you're just relying on random chance shopping at thrift stores and library sales, like I do. The Wine of Violence by James Morrow. Another one I hadn't heard of until I found it. And it's uh, kind of an interesting premise that I don't remember. The Eyes of the Overworld by Jack Vance. I don't remember if I invoked this one specifically by name when I was talking about Vance, but this is my favorite fantasy book. I like the original Dying Earth book a little bit more, but that's definitely has one foot much deeper into science fiction than this one and Cudgel Saga. I haven't read 
Real to the Marvelous, I'm saving it. Space Relations by Donald Barr. This guy, Donald Barr, was a professor at wherever um, uh, Jeffrey Epstein went to college and they had some kind of personal involvement. And there's some stuff in this that echoes details of the Epstein scandal. So this is very, very in demand from people who are obsessed with Jeffrey Epstein. The Iron Dragon's daughter, Michael Swanick, I'm guessing that's pronounced. It's the Science Fiction Book Club 50th Anniversary Collection. And anybody who chooses that as the expression for their jacket photo is okay by me. And this is supposed to be an anti-fantasy book and an early steampunk classic uh, that interested me. This was a gift from the owner of Verbatim Books in San Diego, which I recommend you check out if you're anywhere close to the area. Australian Science Fiction, selected by John Baxter. Bunch of names in here that I just don't recognize at all. Oops, oops. It's separating from the spine, that's okay. She also gave me this Alien Art by Gordon Dixon, one of the all-time greatest covers that I've ever seen. Philip Mon, or Man, the Eye of the Queen. This is the same guy who wrote Master of Pax Wax, which I keep threatening to read, and I, I drag my feet on it because I feel like when I read it, it will be less funny. I got this movie tie-in edition of The Time Machine by H.G. Wells, which I don't have in hard copy at all. I read it on Kindle, or I should say reread it. And this uh, was on my top 15 books video. The update for that, I realized, is over a year. We, we are past the year anniversary mark of that video, so I'm going to shoot an update, put that out sometime soon copy of Out of the Silent Planet by C.S. Lewis. I have the second book in the trilogy, the space trilogy. I just named the third one. Ursula Le Guin. This is The Beginning Place. The Ice People, a French science fiction novel that I think was a bestseller when it was published, has since been largely forgotten. I had never heard of it and has a little bit of a scandalous history which always piques my interest. Soldier of the Mist by Jean Wolfe. Joanna Russ, The Hidden Side of the Moon. She is best known for writing The Female Man, and she is often cited as a great, and I've never, not only never read her, but actually never come across one of her books when I'm sourcing books. The Startling Worlds of Henry Kuttner. I have the best of Henry Kuttner, these are quite rare, so I just want to hang on to it. There might be a lot of redundancy between the two books that I have, but the cover was really great, too. Another underrated luminary. This is a rare find. Clark Ashton Smith's The Monster of the Prophecy in the Timescape Binding. This is worth at least $20. I will be keeping this and likely reading it. He was one of the forebears of weird fiction, along with Lovecraft, and uh, is supposed to be... Lovecraft's literary superior, that's what I hear from people. George H. Smith's The Second War of the Worlds. There's another sequel to War of the Worlds that is much more common than this one. I didn't know that there was more than one sequel. And to spoil a bit of my top 15 upcoming list, War of the Worlds supplanted the time machine for me, for Wells, and uh, so this appealed to me. Suzette Hayden Elgin's Native Tongue, Interestingly, I actually read one of her books that was not a fiction book. It was The Art of Verbal Self-Defense, which is a really fascinating book. It's, it's uh, about how to pick up on people pushing your boundaries and how to diffuse, like, do this verbal judo on them. I didn't know that she wrote science fiction, and it's pretty rare to find any of her work anywhere. So I don't know anything about native tongue, but my understanding is she was a linguist, so her fiction has a lot to do with linguistics. Frank Herbert's The Dosati Experiment. This is the sequel to another Herbert book that I have. I think it was the sequel to Whipping Star, which I also have in a similar edition. 
Engine Summer by John Crowley. I just love the title and the cover. It's one of those books I just have a feeling about. My instincts tell me that that's something interesting. Jack Chalker, The Web of Chosen. I have seen this cover a few times before and I really like it. It's just really weird and creepy. Terry Carr, The Light at the End of the Universe. I think these are comedy science fiction shorts. Not a very common book. Again, it has some kind of endorsement from Harlan Ellison or association with Harlan Ellison. I guess I got a few litfic books in here too. Rules of Attraction by Brett Easton Ellis. Uh, I've actually never read this one, American Psycho. I'm not super eager to read it, but Less Than Zero is one of my favorite books ever. Farewell Earth's Bliss, a very rare book by DJ Compton. DG Compton, another person that I've heard invoked quite frequently. Convict World. This is going to be read very soon. This is next up on my TBR. Roadside Picnic by their Sturgatsky brothers in a movie binding. That's fine with me. You almost never find Sturgatsky ever. I've been on the lookout for it for got to be a couple years now. That's the first one I've ever found. <laughs> this is truly an elite god tier cover. False Dawn by Chelsea Yar Yarbrough. The biker werewolf in the post-apocalyptic setting sunscape. I don't know if this is going to be a good book, but look at the cover. And Dinner at Deviant's Palace by Tim Powers, who is a local Southern Californian author, I think. I'm in San Diego. And wrote... A fantasy book that I also found at a library bookstore and is supposed to be another one that's really underrated, kind of a forgotten author, and that's one of his early ones and people seem to really love it. Gordon R. Dixon's The Dragon at War. I think I may have this entire series now, starting with Dragon and the George. A hard copy, I think book club edition, of James Blish's Midsummer Century. Kick-ass cover. Blish is rising in my estimation every time I read him. He's got to be in my top three favorite authors. Stargate. I have seen this book come up a few times on BookTube. It's pretty rare. Everybody loves it. Everybody raves about this book. I finally found it. It is a book club edition. Downward to the Earth by Silverberg. This is one of his great books and one that I have been on the lookout for because I would like to read. Silverberg's great books. Dragon and the Fair Maid of Kent by Gordon Dixon. Shakespeare's Planet by Simak. Enchanted Pilgrimage by Simak. This may go up for auction because I think I already have this one. Vintage copy omnibus edition of Lord of the Rings in paperback. I'm probably going to sell this one. I haven't decided if I want to sell this one or hang on to these uncommon UK paperbacks and wait until I find Return of the King. One of those is getting auctioned. A hard copy, Dispossessed, no dust jacket, I'm guessing probably book club edition. I found two hard covers of Michelle Welbeck. This is Submission, one of my favorites. Uh, probably this or whatever has to be my favorite, Welbeck and The Map and the Territory, which is one I have not actually read. Clifford Simak, Highway to Eternity. Let me show you some of the ones that are gonna go up for auction. I have about seven or eight more of these crates of books and I need to move them. I just wanna get them out of my apartment. I will be live streaming. You will be able to watch on your phone or on your desktop. Although I recommend doing it on your phone for a reason I'll explain. And it gives you the ability to instantly bid just clicking a button. So depending on how many people watch, what the demand is, everything starts at a buck. You'll probably be able to snag a bunch of these for a buck. And the way the shipping works is it's like four or five dollars shipping for the first thing that you order during the auction. And then every time you buy something extra, you only get charged half of the shipping cost. So for example, if you, let's say bought this Paolo Buck gloopy book for me for a buck, you won the auction, and the auctions only last 20 seconds, 20 to 30 seconds. 
If you won this for a buck, you would be charged around four or five dollars shipping for this first item. And then let's say you won this Jack Chalker book also for a buck, you would be charged the dollar plus probably two and a half bucks for shipping for this one. So shipping is charged per item. So you have the opportunity to snag a whole bunch of books to be delivered in the mail to you from me for used bookstore prices or less. I can't promise that because it all depends on what people bid, but I have so much stuff, you should be able to get some pretty awesome de uh, deals. The auction is gonna start on Sunday, July 3rd at noon Pacific time. I've run a bunch of these auctions for clothing. That's my full-time gig. I'm a clothing reseller in my square life. And uh, it's great fun. Also, I'll be able to show you the condition of each book live on video instead of relying on text description and photographs to convey the condition. You'll be able to actually see it live. I recommend that you download the app and do it that way because one of the functionalities of Whatnot is that it allows me to do giveaways. So a lot of this stuff I'm just gonna put up for free. You enter a raffle, you pay nothing, I pay all the shipping, and I'll be doing a bunch of those. You can't do that for whatever reason on the desktop. Just gonna go through this one crate and give you a taste of uh, the kind of stuff that's gonna be up for auction. It's gonna be a lot of the same stuff that you just saw. Drown Cities in hardcover by Baku Galupi. Chronicles of Amber, an ex-library edition. This is volume two. Here's volume one, Roger Zelazny. The Jack Chalker. The Exploits of Eben, Eben, Ebenezem, Ebenezem by Craig Shaw Gardner. Vintage Arthur C. Clarke. This is Against the Fall of Night. Super cool cover. Susan Coons, Ron. However it's pronounced, it's got a cool kick-ass big moth on it. Another Arthur C. Clarke, Meeting with Medusa. Considered keeping this one for myself. Tanith Lee's The Wars of This, with a Medusa on the cover. Odd Warlock Out by Christopher Shastiff. Arthur C. Clarke's Island in the Sky, Islands, plural, in the sky. Jandar of Callisto by Lynn Carter. That's a pretty rare one. Sherry S. Tepper's The Awakeners. She wrote Grass, pretty celebrated author. Three books by Evangeline Walton. Probably auction these all together. Probably start at three bucks. It's gorgeous covers. God Emperor of Dune in this kick-ass big trade paperback. I think UK binding. Prince of Sparta by Jerry Purnell and S.M. Sterling. The Halloween Tree by Ray Bradbury. Really cool cover. Against the Fall of Night, another Ar Arthur Clarke. Mr. Samler's Planet by Saul Bellow. Special Deliverance in hardcover by Clifford Simak. The White Heart by Nancy Springer in hardcover. Gorgeous, very rare copy in hardcover of uh, City by Clifford Simak, one of my favorites. It is a book club edition. That is not a common cover at all. Robert E. Howard's The Hour of the Dragon, the Conan novel. I think the only full length Conan novel written by Howard. The World and Thorin by Damon Knight. I have a copy of this, the same edition. Another book that's really not that common. Damon Knight is a wonderful author. Waiting for the Galactic Bus by Park Godwin. Hardcover of Mastodonia by Clifford Simak. This one I may keep, I'm not sure. Circus World by Barry Longyear. No, I'll probably auction that. Someone will probably want Circus World, whatever the hell that is. The Warlock Enlarged by Christopher Shastiff. R.A. McAvoy's A Trio for Loot. Black Sun Rising by C.S. Friedman. Friedman. Another Michael Swanick or Swanwick. Vacuum Flowers, hardcover. And Judith Tars, The Hound and the Falcon. This is, again, just one of many, 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 many boxes of books like this. I would say this is probably the lowest quality box. I'm not just saying that. There's some real classics in the other ones, some real gems. Hope to see you there. And that top 15 video is coming. And also I'm gonna be doing another review video. 
pretty soon. All right, appreciate it, guys.